basically a step drill. And it means you can start with a pilot hole and then just open it up to whatever size you want in one go. So. Oh, yes! There you go, that looks good, excellent. This will then sit over the secondary shaft, like so. And I've got an oil seal here. This will glue in place finally, but will be left dry for now, but that will help centre that end. So that's fine. Now, the idea is I've got a mark from underneath where this square section tube on the airframe is, because I'm going to need to drill two holes down here to fix this to the airframe. Pete, mate. Yeah. Can you just um, keep this end centred while I try and mark it underneath? There and there. And then we can drill it. I've drilled the two holes in the square section tube there. And I'm just putting on some non corrosive silicon. Right, I think I'm ready for chamber. If you can take that off, clamp off, and then take the two sleeves. Got them? Yep. <laughs> Coming down. Give it a tap. It's not Morse code, it's trying to get a thing in the bearing. That's it, it's nothing in, it's going, it's going, it's going. Lovely jubbly. Now, we need a little cog, the other end. I need to clamp on this cog onto the secondary shaft, so it's just a process of sequentially tightening up these Allen key bolts to effectively squeeze the cog onto the shaft. Okay, sorted. Next, the chain back on. I've linked the chain together from the top with an old connector link, but you can now see why this little access hatch is in the bottom here, because the actual pin it's got to come up from the bottom and then as it comes out to put in some little spaces in the chain last little link over the top and then this clip which will be eventually painted white so you can see it more easily There we go, one chain sorted. Now there's quite a lot more work to do to this in fabricating the lid, also putting a safety spacer on the main shaft here. But once all that's done, we can put the oil mixture in and seal all that lot up. But first let me show you how this will all work in normal operations. The engine here will drive the primary shaft here with the belts on. These will take the rotation back to the secondary shaft here with the big pulley on, which connects with the tail rotor but through that secondary shaft and then the little cog on the top and the chain drives the big cog here which drives the main shaft and the rotors. That's all good and well, but what if the engine fails? Well, thanks to the freewheeling sprag clutch in the secondary, as the blades continue to rotate with the engine stopped, you can keep your tail rotor turning, which means you have complete control over the helicopter to get back down to earth safely. The counter shaft is now on. This is driven by a belt from the secondary shaft in here and all that does is drive the very expensive fan blade that's now fully fitted and bonded in place there. So that's sorted. Round to the side. The alternator is in place and down here the oil filter. Next job, exhaust. Just a little job that I have to do is to put on heat wrap, which is this stuff, onto the exhaust, which is this bit. The point of doing this is obviously a lot of heat is going to get generated by this exhaust and covering it in heat wrap just protects those more delicate parts of the engine compartment. At times like this, that years of plaster casting animals with broken legs comes in very handy. It's 
best to take your time with this to get it right, but it's actually a very satisfying job. We're nearly at the point where this is finished. It will take three or four days to dry out. If you want it to take a little less time, the thing to do is take it into the warm, shift grandma out from in front of the fire and put it in her place. When it's dry, it gets painted up with fireproof paint to stop any oil or anything getting stuck in it, which could be a fire hazard, and then it can get fitted. Lovely, jubbly. There you go, all wrapped, all painted with heat resistant paint. Doesn't it look gorgeous? All I've got to do now is fit it. I put some tape over the exhaust ports to stop any debris dropping in them, but obviously take that out before I actually fit it. Now, this is a bit of a tight squeeze to get up here because the airframe tapers back where it's got the tail boom supports. That goes up there, like so, and then should up again. Onto there, like that. Now, with that roughly in the right place, I can then think about gaskets, just three cornered and quite cleverly got a little handle on this side so that you can just joggle it about a bit when you need to. You haven't seen a radiator anywhere, have you? There it is, lurking underneath the cardboard. This job is to attach a fan shroud to the radiator and to put on this fan ring. Three bits. First job, though, is to put on a foam ceiling strip all the way around the edge of the radiator. Where's the end? Next, I can fit the shroud. Now, the radiator itself, you're probably thinking, that is a big radiator for not a very big engine. But the way helicopters work is that that engine will be going at over 4,000 revs permanently when you're actually using the helicopter. So it does run very hot. So it needs a serious amount of cooling, hence a big radiator. That drops over like so. And then when I do this down, do the bolts up on this, it will so it's just cover that hole up. Don't want any rubbish going in. It will squash down that seal. There we go. It's just four bolts with big washers. Last bit on is the fan ring itself. I've put a bead of silicon around there as a sealer. Now this needs to drop on. I've marked on it that that's front, that's front there, so that's going to be that side. Now to line it up so we don't smear the silicon everywhere, I can drop this down here. And there's a hole at the top here. Doo -doo -doo. And this just drops it down without smearing it too much. Holds it in the right kind of place. And then it's all pop riveted. Now, Pete, just drop this in very carefully. Yeah. The fan is expensive. I come down on my knees. Do yeah, pray you don't break it. <laughs> so it slots up into the ring. OK. Yeah. And then if you've got it near that bracket on the tail boom support brace there yeah got it and got the back as well you got the weight yeah, yeah got it okay right i'll put the bolt in this side let's fit this spacer on the far side of this bracket this 
bolt will be wired on for the hole in the frame here eventually. Two seconds, mate. 